When groundwater or anything else makes you nervous when you approach a job and you're like, this is a concern? Um, I mean, there's, there's a bunch. Uh, people get a little excited about having a new property and they'll come in and just start chainsawing everything down where their house is going to go, where their road's going to go. Um, it helps if they leave it up. Three foot is a great help. When they cut them down to the ground, it is, it is a very, not a very fun job. Right, because you that extra leverage to get the roots out and such. Well, correct. Plus, I don't know they're there until I hit them full blast and bang my head into the front of my machine. <laughs> sure. So that's a good time. So that's a good. Do you like for like most of the projects we're on? Hey, I buy it, and sometimes before I buy it, you're out there. Mm-hmm. But I buy it. I don't do nothing. You come out, and then usually you kind of like, hey. This is where I think we need to, you know, you start giving me some ideas. Hey, these three point, these three spots are going to be great when it comes to either water issues or, or different things you'll point out. Do you recommend people when they, hey, before you just start cutting trees down, get you a good dirt guy, I, come out there and look at it. And then before you start just tearing stuff down that you don't need to be and cutting be, and, and get some consultation on, you know, where is this water coming to? Is this really going to work for my house pad? You know, am, am I building this in, in the right? I want this view, but is this really the best place to have it? Or and then they went and cut down a, a tree that didn't need to be cut down, or or did or clearing Correct. that didn't need to clear that that mm-hmm. they want that instead of getting some consultation on it. You, Absolutely, we're kind of. This is a good segue. Before this, you wanted to talk about house location. You mm-hmm. know, talking about land management. You're also a builder, and we'll get there in just a minute. But. If somebody has a piece of land, what are some considerations they, they should consider for where to put the home on their land? So um, utilities are always going to be a big cost if you're buying raw land. Um, where is the electricity at and how, how, where, how far are you going to have to take it to get to where you want your, your place? And even if you haven't bought that property yet, where I want to build my place, am I going to be able to get an easement for my neighbor if I have to get power from there and I need a guy wire that's going to go onto their property, that turns into a major issue sometimes for people that bought a place and they were dead set and that's what they were going to do. And it's been discouraging for some people that either had to spend an extra 10 to 20 grand to run power from a completely different direction that they didn't think about. Um, So utilities would be one as far as your location goes. Um, Ingress and egress, how you get in and out of that property. Are you crossing over, uh, waterways creeks um you know things that things to think about how you're going to get there and what that cost is going to be um to get there which goes back to the calling somebody and say hey come come check, check it out, out. Right. <laughs> sure <laughs> <laughs> um and then you know you're always going to have a view from an elevated platform typically everybody wants that but doesn't realize when i'm doing that every once in a while we get lucky and we have a a knob a kind of a semi-flat spot most of the times those are big fill jobs and it's not a thought you know they're like oh this view's beautiful and then i come out and they're like it's not that bad and i go out and shoot it and it's 10 foot uh fall from one side to the other (laughs) that's the the, yes are we laughing at your house now kevin well no that well that's every time i was like trent's like ah it's five i'm like trent come on you're exaggerating (laughs) and then we'll he'll bust we'll bust it out uh the transit and sure enough it's (laughs) within a couple inches of what he said and it doesn't lie, so I, unless it's off, but it's not going to be off that much. <laughs> no. and, I, and I get them calibrated regularly. But uh, and then the other one on the flip side of that is um, I get calls. I got this. I don't need much um, site prep. My I'm building on flat ground, flat. Well, that's another that can be very problematic um, because where if I'm on a really flat piece of property, where does the water go when it rains? It's it's sits there, right? So. You think, okay, well, we're not going to have to do any site prep here because it's flat, and we're just going to sit forms on here, and we're going to go. Well, the water is going to sit in that area, so to get past that, you actually have to build that pad up and that house elevation up so that you've got enough room to push the water to where you don't care that that water is going to sit. Mm-hmm. You know, gotcha. So what's my yard area? What's my acceptable area that I want to keep maintained and don't have water standing? Because it's going to stand somewhere. Because you don't want to stand just right around your foundation. Absolutely not. Yeah. Have you-